Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Um, today's topic is creative comping in Bitwig. Uh, but first, let's get the basics out of the way. Uh, comping is basically comes from the idea that you can play an instrument and uh, repeat the section over and over again and then uh, select the best part of this recording. So what we need to do to set this up in Bitwig is, uh, well, we need a loop region, activate loop. We need an audio region, which has to be record enabled. And then the only thing that's left to do is actually record. And as soon as it loops around, this little sign here occurs. And when we look at the region now, uh, we have not recorded anything, but uh, now we have uh, three different takes and then we can start selecting whatever we like from these specific takes. And this is a comping region. So, but now the second way to, of doing this, let me select a sampler, a sample, drop it in here. I can just right click on it and then say fold to takes. And what that will do, we will just take the sample and we are when I say two takes, it will cut it into two and arrange the second part of the audio file underneath the, the first half. And now I can also kind of start selecting which kind of audio regions I like. Okay, this is, these are the basics, but now we want to do something a little bit more creative. And I like to do this in the, in the session view. And so just double click on the audio region. On, on an empty space, and then this will create an empty audio region for me. Uh, loop length is, here is 2.1, which is okay for this example. Now I have my sample manager open, and let me just... And now, no, uh, what you need to do first is click on this little comping button here, and this will reveal the space down here, which says no takes. Let me make this, let me bring this into focus. And now I can just drag and drop uh, samples onto it. And you can see that they are being arranged underneath each other. So this is how I can just use stuff from my sample library instead of recording something, which is, yeah, in my case, um, kind of the default, how I want to use this um, feature because I'm not playing any instruments. And now, like with the other examples, I can just start highlighting sections. And for every highlighted section, it will create a composition up here. Uh, by the way, what I'm using here are uh, Futurephonic loops from the Mutant Blaster glitch file. I'm not affiliated with them. I can only recommend their stuff. It's really amazing quality. So, and now uh, we have without even thinking about it, just composed uh, a, a new sample entirely uh, from by just selecting from these loops. And now let me just... Uh, okay. And now we can just continue. And it's very easy to uh, come up with your own variations of these loops uh, without even investing a lot of time and spoiling your, your creative mood. And once you have something, well, just leave it as is, duplicate it, and now you have a second region or as, as many as you like. You can come up with something new and then, yeah, kind of keep, keep all the versions you like. So the next two methods I want to show you work a little bit different. So we're going to go to our sample library and just grab a few and drag them over. Uh, what Big Big does by default, it wants to create a new audio region for every sample that you drag in. But when you hold down control, yeah, for like three or four seconds, then it kind of will switch into a stack and will place uh, the regions underneath each other instead of next to each other, which is what we want. Now let's look at these samples real quick. I want to make sure that they all have the same length. Okay. 
Now they all have the same length. Uh, let's see if Bitpick detected the tempo correctly. They should all be 138. Yeah, that seems okay. Now select all of them. And what we want to do, we want to change the behavior. First, we want to define an action. We don't want this to be looping. So we want to define that after a certain time, something else should happen. So we have a lot of options here. And what I'm looking for is random, which means whenever this task or this action is completed, it will play another random clip. And the definition is what I set up here is like after a 16th note or after two 16th note, I want to switch to another region and uh, it should be just one of these regions randomly selected. So let's see what happens when I hit play. Okay, interesting, but not quite um, what, we, what we want yet because every region just starts playing from the beginning over and over again. So we have to change something here, which is the play mode. What it, uh, what it is doing now is trigger from start. So whenever a new region is triggered, it plays from start. We want to change it to legato so that it continues playing where the last region left off. And now let's listen to it again. And as you can see, now it jumps uh, from region to region in a random manner and continues playing wherever it left off. So it plays through the entire loops. And this is very interesting because, yeah, it creates very interesting variations uh, randomly without you doing anything. And if you want, we can create a new audio region, uh, change its input to audio two in this case. <laughs> and just start recording and then chop it up and keep whatever we like. Uh, next option, let me drag in a few samples again. Okay, and this time I want to create new regions, so this is fine, just drop them. Now highlight them all and hit Command G. So we have grouped them and if I would hit play on here, it would play all of them simultaneously, which, um, is what I want, but I do not want to hear them simultaneously. So uh, switch to the, the device view and grab a grid, an effects grid. And by removing the input here, we uh, sever the audio connection. So when I hit play here, they're all playing, but I can't hear anything, which is exactly what we need to start with. Now we will get the audio in via sidechain. And well, we have how many? Uh, we have four regions, so copy it four times. And now select the audio output of the respective tracks in this group. Okay. Now go to mix and grab a merge module. Let me increase the size a bit and hook it up. Give it more output, switch to nearest and then hook up the output to the audio out. So now we will only hear the first one. Um, so we need a method of switching between the output. And we're gonna do that by using favorite module steps. Just making it a bit larger so that it's convenient to work with. And now hook this up to the, to the selector. And this will now define which audio region is, is playing. And this is really fast, you know, to come up with new variations. You can even open it up and just randomize it until you get something you like and then commit that to audio. Uh, we can go further because now we're in the grid, we can do everything. We can, for example, use uh, a gate module, switch it to trigger, um, grab an envelope, put it in between, trigger it via the gate.
and creates all sorts of kind of variations, whatever we like. So now um, the final method, what we want to do is we want to trigger the audio tracks via MIDI note. So we're going to change that first into a sum so that all of them are playing. Now we go to the imp IO and grab a key on, and this one will create a signal whenever the corresponding uh, key is being played. Now go to mix, grab select in and well, no, connect it to the selector. So whenever the, the key is playing, it will switch to second output. And when this one is active, then we want actually a signal going through to our summing module. So drop them in here. And then just start hooking it up. Now that this is done, uh, select a separate MIDI note for each device here. C, C sharp, D, and D sharp. So now when I hit the MIDI notes, nothing is happening. I still can't hear anything playing, but I can switch the input here to all ins, for example. And then um, hit record enable. And now I'm playing on the keyboard and it opens the gate for the respective note that I'm playing. In. So now what's interesting is that we can right click on the group header and say show master track. And what we get here is another region, uh, basically a MIDI region that we can record into. So I can record, record it just something from my keyboard. And now I can further I'll work with it in here. Quantize everything, for example. Um, no, like this. So now hit. And if I want something else, I just drag this down here and record something new. Or of course, I can, oh, no, that was too much. I can be more conservative and just draw a MIDI region here, go to MIDI and start drawing in whatever you know, I want to happen. So now it sounds different every time because uh, the loop lengths are not identical for all of them. So I'll go to each one of them and make sure it's just 2.1. Yeah, and it's cool because now you can only, you can leave everything as is in here and just switch out the MIDI region and you get completely different uh, results. And now, of course, that we have MIDI signals arriving here, we can use that, of course, to process things further, send it to an envelope through a filter, uh, which then interacts with, with the MIDI signal gate uh, or, or pitch or whatnot. So the possibilities are really almost endless and uh, it's neatly just everything hidden away in a group. So uh, that's it for today. I hope uh, you, you learned something, you, you like these uh, ideas. I, I really like the way, you know, you can work creative in, in Bitwig. So comment, like, uh, subscribe, of course, if you enjoy what I'm doing here and uh, see you next time.